Glorious aerial shot of Cockermouth here, the starting point for stage three, which would see the riders going to Kelso, a distance of 216 kilometers. Wearing the yellow jersey, Petra Vakoc of Etix Quick Step. And there was a problem in the early stages for Sir Bradley Wiggins. He was delayed with, uh, well, a little bit of a mechanical difficulty, but he didn't lose any time. This was the neutralized section. The advantage of him being delayed was the fact that the huge crowd saw the superstar. They also saw other superstars as well. Mark Cavendish right there in the middle of the mix at the front, no doubt thinking about the stage ahead. Kilometer zero, and the first to attack was Connor Dunn of Anpos Reaction. He was the early leader of the Yodel Direct Sprint Jersey competition after day one. But quickly a break of six riders formed ahead. Russell Downing, Adis Krupis, Tyler Farrar, Matt Cronshaw, Johnny McAvoy, and Marcin Bieler Blocky. Five of the six, 22 minutes behind the yellow jersey, but the problem was Matt Cronshaw, uh, sorry, the problem was was Johnny McAvoy who started at only 120 so he was a danger to the yellow jersey but the sprinting was on and on fiercely as well and sprint number one at Abbey Town was taken by Adis Krupis the Lithuanian national champion of Anpos chain reaction Russell Downing second and Ferrer third in the second sprint it was Krupis again that powered his way to the line to pick up the three points so six points already gathered and at the start of the day the leader Peter Williams of uh, one pro with nine so there's a chance for Krupis to get level with Peter Williams. Now then, Marcin Bieler Blocky led this one out, the teammate of Williams. He knew the danger, and it was Bieler Blocky who powered his way to the line at the third sprint at Newcastleton, getting the three points. It meant that Krupis with the two would finish the day on eight points, one behind Peter Williams. The kiss blown to the Kamla by uh, the man that had done the good work there, Bieler Blocky for his teammate. Now then, as they got towards the summit of the first climb at Waco, it was super sprinter Tyler Ferrer, the American, who rides on the MTN Quebeca, that denied the top spot for Matt Cronshaw of Madison Genesis. So super sprinter Ferrer, the American from Seattle, out to prove he could climb as well. The peloton at this stage were well distanced from the leading three, and it was beginning to look that there was a possibility that the yellow jersey here would remain with Vakoc, but the stage victory had a chance of going to the three down the road. As we got to the second sprint at Wilton Hill, once again, the American Tyler Ferrer was the man with the speedy legs ahead of Matt Cronshaw. These positions had no effect at all on the overall standings in the King of the Mountains because they hadn't scored any points at all, the three that you're looking at in the opening two stages. Now, powering on towards the end, and uh, the Lithuanian national champion, uh, Krupis, was a spent force and lost contact, and so did Russell Downing of Colt Energy, the former British champion. They were quickly absorbed back into the peloton. And as they got to the summit of the final climb at Dingleton Common, once again, it was a full house for the American Tyler Hamilton. Uh, sorry, for the uh, American Tyler Farrar. And then the sprint behind, the important sprint, actually, for the uh, three points available on the line for fourth had taken by Ian Bibby. So with the overall standings in the King of the Mountains, it meant that Bibby had closed the gap down on Ian Stewart. Still in the Skoda King of the Mountains jersey, Ian Bibby, but now only two points behind Tom Stewart. In the closing stages, the pace was frenetic, and near the back there was a crash, there was a touch of wheels, and uh, it brought down the overall race leader, Petra Vakoc, and that was at the five-kilometre point. There we are, Vakoc sitting and leaning against the wall it looked at that stage as though he may have a wrist problem and he was delayed and delayed significantly he lost almost seven minutes by the end and had it have happened in the final three kilometers he would have remained in the lead but the three kilometer rule he was outside it at five well all the big superstars are beginning to gather at the end to try and set themselves up for a sprint finish and it was the team of Lotto Sadal trying to set it up Andre Greipel the more favored sprinter was trying to set it up for his teammates because he possibly fancied them for the opportunity of the stage of victory. And De Bee was in there, and De Boucheret, the former Belgian champion. But then there was a big attack down the inside from the rider from I Am, Sondra Holst Enger, the Norwegian on the extreme right of the screen, and looking as though he could snatch the stage. Also trying to get through was uh, Viviani from Sky. And Viviani had in the wheel in one Lobato of Movistar, and as they came to the line, Viviani, the speedy Italian, snatched the second victory 
of this year's tour and a chance to look at it again it was a Norwegian on I am that was leading it out Sondra Holst Inga and Inga looked as though he got the firepower to hold off the challenge but then Viviani ignited the burners and began to come up on the side of the I am rider and Juan Lobato who finished second yesterday in the stage to Köln held on to second once again ahead of Trentin of Etix Quickstep the first three over the line good ride by Owen Duell again for Team Wiggins the young British rider he was up in the mix and so a little bit further back from JLT Condor was Graham Briggs but it was Viviani that sealed the stage victory and gave the victory salute in front of the big crowd here at the finish right in front of Flors Castle what a stage finish that was but the big loser of course was uh, Petra Vakoc the yellow jersey who was delayed with that crash and he limped in and got a sympathetic round of applause approximately seven minutes behind so what it meant that the yellow jersey would move onto the shoulders of the Spaniard Juan Labato as we confirmed the result of the stage Viviani from Juan Labato third Matteo Trantin from Enga de Bouchere Duel Betiol Briggs Peters and Poles and so the yellow jersey now firmly on the shoulders of the Spaniard from Movistar Juan Labato and he also would be the leader in the chain reaction cycles points jersey but of course he can't wear two jerseys tomorrow so the rider who is lying second in that classification who is uh, uh, will enjoy that uh, honor and that is dual but that is the unofficial classification after stage three Labato the new leader 10 seconds ahead of Bosenhagen with Floris Getz lying in third position two British riders in the top 10 Owen Dual sixth and Graham Briggs seventh